All right, guys, over the last three months, I've been pumping out videos like twice a week over the Drift Mustang, going to Drift events, finishing up the Dodge Ram Charger and the CEJ7. But I stopped for the last couple of weeks, especially after Holly Forge Fest. And I kind of went radio silent, but I came up on a really great opportunity to work with Milo at RMS to finish up their SEMA build. Now, at this point in time, we're less than two weeks out from going to SEMA and showing off this car. It's a 69 Camaro. It's LS7 powered. It's got tons of great parts. This car is insane because it's not just a show car. It's going to be an actual race car that belongs to Garrett Randall. Now, I want to show you the car, but I really don't want to steal their thunder. I can show you a couple of the pieces here, but that's really about it. But I will give you updates on the Drift Mustang, the Ram Charger, because we've done a lot to that, and the CJ7. So I'm gonna give you a sneak peek in here, and then we'll jump to the other three builds. Let's go. Again, there's a lot going on with that Camaro. I don't want to steal the thunder. Uh, to my understanding, I think it's gonna be a time attack car, so it's not just a show car, but everything is done uh, immaculate. I love the work Milo does here, and I'm extremely honored that he invited me out to help him finish and do some work on the car. Now, I'll do a full-blown interview with Milo at SEMA, so you guys can get the full details and the full rundown of how crazy this car is. Now, I'm about to boogie on over to the house to show you guys the stuff that I'm gonna to do to the Mustang. After Holly Ford Fest, I realized that there's a lot that I need to do to this car, and there's a lot of low-hanging fruit to make that car even more competitive. So let's get to the house, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, guys, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. Here's the Mustang in the garage, and it's become quite the catch-all. You can see on the trunk lid, I've got a bunch of other parts and spray cleaners and the tire pressure gauge. But let's talk about what I wanna to do to this car. All right, now after talking to all the guys at Holly Ford Fest, there's one of two things that I can do. I can add more power, which would be a ton of fun, or I can work on getting the car a little bit lighter and working on the rear suspension to get that live axle to do what I want to do in terms of side grip and just forward grip in general. So the route I'm taking, because it's a little bit easier and more cost effective for me, is making the car lighter. Now, one of the ways to make the car lighter is to replace the OEM glass with the polycarbonate, as you can see a lot of drifters do, and even a lot of like road racers, autocrossers, you name it. So at Holly Ford Fest, I met Mr. Hunter Hobbs, and he actually has an S197, and he makes these windows. So right here, you can see I've already got one of the rear quarter windows, and if you follow me on Instagram, you saw where I already peeled the backside for a little ASMR, and it's basically a perfect fit so he's also kind enough to send you the hardware. So you do need a nut cert gun. So you can go ahead and put the nut certs in there and then he gives you all the hardware as well. Now, one thing to point out is he actually makes these to FD spec. So if you're building an FD car, for example, or you want to take your S197 to the next level, uh, he's definitely somebody who can help you out with making these polycarbonate windows. So I'm starting out with the rear quarter windows and then I'm going to move on to the rear glass and then the front glass. So what that should do is make the car just a little bit more lighter and easier to work on because them back spaces are really hard and really tough to get into. All right, but how much of a difference could some glass make, right? Well, it, may, it can make a really big difference once you pair it up with the front tube chassis and then the front, uh, excuse me, the rear back halfing of the car. Now those are some humongous jobs and listen, I don't have that deep of pockets, all right? So I'm gonna have to be doing a lot of this work on my own. So lucky enough, I met Brianna, who is a welder fabricator. So I'm also gonna be taking welding classes so I can go ahead and front half the car, back half the car, and be able to do everything myself because I can't afford to keep paying people to do all this work to my car. And plus, I love being able to work on my own car and build things. I mean, one conversation I had with somebody recently is if the camera wasn't here, I would probably still be doing this stuff because I'm just that passionate about it. So let's talk about the front. All right, in a recent episode of Sick Whips, I interviewed Matthew Glasscock and his S197, and that car was completely insane. Now, one thing I noticed was the front of his car was way more accessible, way easier to work on, and of course, it was lighter. And he even mentions in the video that his car was really close to a 50-50 weight distribution. Um, I can't remember if that was with or without him in the car, but the point is that there's a lot of meat left on his car to make it even better. But cutting the car, cutting all this stuff out right here, 
that's the easy stuff. Now, once you get into installing all the tubes and everything to get your mounting points for your radiator, your fans, your headlights, your fog lights, the bumper, that's where it gets tricky. So instead of, what's the phrase, teach a man a fish or give a man a fish, I'm gonna get myself taught up so I can do this stuff myself. And that's exactly what we're gonna do to the front. Now, because the back of my car is covered in crap, that's just a reality. Uh, I'm not gonna show you the back, but essentially it's gonna be the same thing. Hunter and uh, both Matthew Glasscock, they also make rear kits to back half the rear of the car. So thankfully these guys have done all the engineering because that's where I would get lost. So again, cutting the car is gonna be easy, welding everything up, tacking everything up in place. That's gonna be the hard part. But again, shout out to Brianna. She's gonna teach me how to weld and we'll get all that stuff done in house. I also have to do a lot of other work to make that happen. Now, once you do back half the car, the car's already loud as it is driving it. So I'm also gonna make a firewall uh, to cover the back. I have some material at the WrestleMod shop and Milo and Edwitt, they're also gonna help me make that. I've used the bead roller before, so I think I'm gonna do uh, just a big old X in the back, maybe something different, maybe some triangles. And um, yeah, that'll be what's coming in the future in the down season, got the material. And I uh, just need to do that. And the last piece would be a roll cage because some of the series that I wanna do in order to tandem, you actually need a roll cage with the door intrusion bars and all that good stuff to make sure you are safe. Um, other than that, again, the rear axle, getting more grip out of the car, making this car do what we want it to do. That's something else we're gonna start dialing in. Um, but slowly but surely, one bolt at a time, we'll start doing all that stuff. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you don't wanna miss it, cause I'll probably be doing it step by step. So you guys have the information that I have. So that's the benefit of going to these events and meeting all these great people. They help you 10X your build and you bounce off ideas. And I'm super excited because I really do love this car. It's a ton of fun. But enough on the Mustang, let's uh, transition over to the old CJ7. The old CJ, AKA catch all number two. These seat brackets are actually for Jesse for, uh, I think it's a 350Z for that drift car. Uh, if you don't know who he is, I did a sick whips episode on his M3 G80, super sick car. But yeah, basically the Jeep CJ for the most part is done. As the weather gets cooler, it's a lot more comfortable to drive in. The only thing I really want to do is refinish these door panels. I mean, they were done 10 years ago. You can see the, the paint job starting to chip, um, but these are TJ doors. So what I'm going to do is, uh, pull these panels off, clean them up again. You can see where my leg has been rubbing right there. And then this handle let go. So every time I open the door, I have to do it from the, from the outside. Now, in here a while ago i did these beautiful speed hug gauges because one they are super bright and way more accurate especially with the speedometer because this speedo uses a gps uh, to track your speed and the other thing is uh, the brightness at night you really couldn't see the oem gauges but for whatever reason don't ask me i never did the oil pressure gauge so the only thing i'm going to do is change the oil pressure gauge for a speed hug gauge I also forgot, I never actually wired up these lights. They're just covered and the wires are back here. Where are they at? Right there. So that's the other thing I'm gonna do here in the down season uh, after SEMA is wire up those lights, change out that gauge, and she'll be A-OK, -okay, good to go. These LED headlights are super bright at night and the pod lights up by the windshield, those are already wired in. I pulled my mirror back so I can open the door and get out. But these um, aux beams are already wired in, so that's good. Um, so that's basically it for the CJ7. We're gonna be doing a lot more trips with this one, especially since the drifting season will be kind of dwindling down. Now that's not a lot of work in terms of the CJ, so I'm super excited to just wrap this up completely. You know what they say, it's never actually done. Once I finish that, I'll probably find something else to do. Off the top of my head, if I wanna use it in the winter, it's gonna need a hard top. It has a heater or maybe even a soft top, excuse me. I got rid of the hard top because it was a hassle to pull it off when I wanted to use the Jeep without the top. So I'll probably go to a soft top setup with some soft doors, that way I can use it in the winter. And I just remembered in the last Jeep video, my wiper motor stopped working. So I'll add that to the list, put a new wiper motor on it. Now the Ram charger, I promised in the last Ram charger video that I would have it up and running. And I do in fact have it up and running. I need to finish dialing in that um, tune in terms of timing and fuel and air and everything like that on the carburetor setup, but other than that, it's up and running. I've added some lights, I've done some more interior work. So the next time you see that truck, it should technically be registered, I think. So we're almost there on that one. So next time I show that truck, be running and driving. Instead of KC's, we did hella lights on the front, uh, front grill. Uh, my dad mounted those up. My dad buttoned up a lot of little loose ends, especially with the 
gauge cluster. Um, had a, we swapped everything out with LEDs, so everything is super visible. And the last thing to do in the gauge cluster is actually the speedometer cable. Put a new one in there and it's not working. Probably user error. But all right guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I wanted to keep it short, but also give you guys an update on what's going on. Things are still moving forward, but right now we got a week and a half left um, before this car gets to SEMA. So we've got a lot of work to do. We're wrapping that stuff up and once that's done, I'll show you guys the final product at SEMA. The guys are busting their asses, they're killing it. I'm excited to be a part of my third SEMA build. The fact that I'm saying that right now is completely insane. I remember when <laughs> I couldn't even figure out how to be a part of one SEMA build and now here we are on the third one, three consecutive years. I'm super excited. I'm super grateful for Milo and Edwitt and the whole team pulling me on board and letting me help out because those guys have put in their 10,000 hours. They really know what they're doing and seeing them work is like, they make it look so easy. And I'm over here struggling just to like prep one part to get painted. Um, they're the ones who, if you haven't seen it, I put a GT500 rear bumper on the Mustang. They let me use a shop, prep it, sand it, shoot it, the whole thing. It took me about three days, but again, super grateful that they're teaching a man to fish and not just giving him a fish. But that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. If you don't wanna miss, the 69 Commando Camaro at SEMA. Hit that subscribe button. We'll do a full depth interview at the SEMA show because again, off the top of my head, I don't know everything that's done to it. Leave a comment below and we'll catch you on the next video at SEMA 2024. Peace out.